so hello and welcome again so we are on part 2 of 2022 edition of how to crack clinical research interviews for CREs so let's start this video and please make sure that you subscribe if this video is helpful for your career so this is again the glance of the role of a CRA and what CRA is. If you need to study, please pause this video and have a look. So in the last video, we saw how to explain your clinical research profile. Then we went on and saw what would be the educational credentials and qualification that you need to explain. We also saw how a CRA working is explained and the kind of results. And finally, we saw what are the functional questions that a CRA can get. Now let's move on and see the next question, which is the question regarding GCP and situational questions. So when it comes to working as a CRA, it is very important that you adhere to certain criteria of ethics and global convention, which are called as ICA GCP practices and conventions. So here they can present you various situational or scenario based question where they will test that what is the kind of ethics that you follow. For example, they can tell you that you are in a lot of pressure to recruit 100 subjects and you have completed 99 subjects and there is a one subject which does not uh, qualify the age criteria but, you, uh, but he produced a fake certificate and what you need is documentation in clinical research and you can enroll this subject or any other kind of uh, scenario they can uh, give you. Here you need to clearly explain the reason why we cannot do that. What are the international criteria? What does the GCP say? Which criteria of the GCP say? Okay, so here you need to have a strong fundamental understanding of IC GCP, the principles of IC GCP, the 13 principles shall be by heart. Okay, here you need to explain them that how uh, do you adhere to the protocol? What are the priorities that you set straight when you go for a monitoring? Okay, then they can also ask you question on the rules and regulation. For example, the NDCD rules of 2019. What are the changes? How are the changes affecting your monitoring? How did you make sure that the regulatory rules are followed? Okay. So these are the GCP and situational based questions. Next would be the question on roles and responsibility and this is a make and break questions. Okay, either you will explain it beautifully if you have that kind of understanding or your interview will stop in this question itself. So please pay attention. So here you need to clearly explain what are the activities that the CRA conducts. Okay, so if anyone asks you that what is the role of a CRA, what does a CRA do? You need to have a very specific and clear answer when you need to explain the activities. Here you also need to have an understanding how the subject recruitment is done. Okay, how a site recruits the subject, what are the inclusion criteria, what are the exclusion criteria if they ask and how are the subject recruited, what is randomization they might ask you. What are the procedure followed for randomization? Do you use any systems or technologies? The IWR is the IVR systems. Okay. Also, they will ask you situational question here again. Uh, for example, you go to a site and you see that the documentation is missing. Then the CRC is creating a new documentation. So is it acceptable? Is there any deviation? Will you retrain them? What is the thought process? That is the main objective of this question. Okay, here they can also ask you a question about IP handling. For example, if IP is stored at a particular temperature, if there is a temperature deviation violation, so what is your plan of action? How will you retrain? What are the kind of uh, corrective and preventive action that you will do? Okay, they will also ask you your understanding about the consenting issues. Okay, what is informed consent? What are the criteria? What if the subject is uh, uneducated? What if the subject doesn't even have his uh, legally acceptable representative? Then how does uh, an IW work? Okay, that also uh, should be explained. Again, the role of various stakeholders. What are the site finances? How is the EC submission done? Okay, and they will also ask your understanding about the trial design. 
is it a single blind study is it a double blind study what is the difference what is difference between phase 2a and 2b okay then in what type of therapeutic area have you worked so what is your understanding of that particular area so roles and responsibility becomes very critical because 99% uh, of the time i will tell you that you will not get ample amount of training because they expect you to have that kind of pedigree or knowledge when you work as a crc or a cta okay so you need to have understanding of the sops gcps the protocols the therapeutic areas your roles and responsibilities are the fundamental of this particular job so this is the kind of preparation you have to do the next question uh, is regarding the regulatory okay uh, there is also uh, the global regulatory laws the fda so they can ask you that what were the changes of ndct rules 2019 you need to be familiar and thorough read through the 2019 rules you need to be familiar with food and drug uh, act of 1945 or the regulations uh, what were there what are the distinctions what is the ethics committee quorum uh, is there a requirement of uh, people from outside the institution what is the number of uh, female participant in a particular ethics committee okay you need to also be well versed with the us fda uh, guidelines or laws because uh, a lot of time uh, the regulatory agency all around the world take cue from them okay so what is uh, 1572 what is investigator undertaking why is it re uh, required they might also tell you that uh, for example uh, an investigator has to sign an undertaking please tell me what does a 1572 form contains what is the role of a principal investigator why does he need to give it in writing so this is the kind of understanding of the regulatory the laws and the rules which govern the conduct of clinical trial in a particular country that should be your understanding and if not you can go you can read these uh, rules and regulation they are available freely on each country's website so it will make you more competent in working as a cra next thing is and the most critical aspect that in clinical trial is safety okay patient safety trumps each and everything so when you are a cra you are essentially the guiding light for the site because 90% of the time it will happen that the pi won't be directly involved the crc will directly liaise with you and he will call you that for example if it's a vaccine trial my subject is having fever vomiting so he's been having vomiting for this and this much time so how should i uh, report in it what is reportable what are solicited event what is unsolicited event you need to know the distinction if my subject is admitted or unfortunately if he died then what are the sa reporting criteria now we report sa in sugam portal in india so how does the sugam portal look what is table 5 in sugam portal you need to understand what kind of documentation goes into sa submission what is the 24 hour submission document required what is the 14 day follow up required you need to have understanding of all of this because you are the most critical member in that particular clinical trial conduct because the site will tell you that there is an sa you will tell the sponsor there is an sa but the sponsor will ask you that what is the next plan of action for the site and the site will ask you your guidance in reporting the sa so you need to have a thorough knowledge so that there is no mistake in reporting any adverse event and serious adverse event and this reporting of the serious adverse event or adverse event critically determines the efficacy of the molecule and safety of the molecule so a cra who has a very higher level of ethics will clearly ask the site to report the adverse event to report the medical history so that whenever this drug efficacy or drug safety is analyzed by the medical team they have a clear idea that what kind of molecule we are dealing with and what kind of effect does this molecule have so these are the eight fundamental question they ask you in clinical research associate interview now i have told you in eight simple questions but as you can understand that these are uh, one of the bigger uh, points in that interview and once you go through this particular uh, slide you understand that what kind of questions that you might face and this will guaranteed help you 
in facing that interview knowing a lot about uh, yourself you can prepare a better and get a successful job okay let's talk about how to plan a cra career because once you get to be a cra then what next okay so to plan a cra career to reach that particular level of success you need to consider four important things first thing is the organization so when you start as a crc it is very important to choose what particular organization for example at an smo or a cro you are working because that particular organization has to have strong fundamental work profile okay because there are a lot of sites which uh, do sham trials which do trial unethically and if you have that kind of pedigree on your cv then it highlights that this particular person is working for this particular organization and he might have a bad work ethic and that will kill your clinical research career even before it starts so choosing your organization your job company is very important second thing is therapeutic area now you might select a very good organization but if that organization works with one single therapeutic area for example if they only uh, work on vaccines or if they only work on uh, pediatric uh, subject or if they only work on covid-19 vaccine then your therapeutic area experience is limited and this particular limited experience will not necessarily entice the recruiter to hire you because when it comes to clinical trial uh, and being hired as a cra he needs to have all round experience so that he is adaptable and he can work competently so try to work on as many diverse therapeutic areas as possible try to go out of your comfort zone so that you get a very good enriching experience of clinical trial and it increases your probability of getting good job the third point is experience let me tell you and admit it very honestly that the kind of experience or the value of experience in clinical research is literally equivalent to gold because as compared to any other field you can ask that even a two year experience in clinical research will increase your salary up to 50% to 90% because the kind of experience the kind of people we have in clinical research are less in numbers plus the people who are competent who have strong fundamentals who have a diverse therapeutic areas even less and that makes your profile very attractive so even if if you have less experience your ability to progress in clinical research is more higher okay and this particular experience will help you in moving and reaching heights in shorter sp span of time okay uh, last but not the least salary so let me tell you frankly that salary in clinical research is glamorous and fabulous okay but the start is slow so make sure that you start at crc level and it goes on increasing exponentially and literally exponentially i mean so make sure that your expertise experience and compensation goes in proportion okay so that you have a right kind of balance in your career profile and once you have that kind of balance once you have that kind of experience expertise also make sure that you are compensated very well because staying at our organization for a long period of time without being compensated clearly highlights that this particular person uh, is not that much interested in being respected because salary is also a kind of respect and you need to go where you are respected so make sure that your experience expertise and compensation goes hand in hand and make sure that you move in the right direction finally i leave you with three golden rules of a cra career which should be followed by each and every clinical research professional okay so the first one would be strong fundamentals so for a successful clinical research career it is very important that you have a strong fundamental understanding because until and unless you have that kind of knowledge you would not be a proper clinical research professional you need to understand the nitty gritty of all the rules regulation sops gcps and how that can be applied to clinical trial working okay once you have a strong fundamental then you can build your beginning and your uh, clinical research career as high as any other career okay so make sure you have strong fundamentals and for that please go and do certification various courses 
and you can build a strong career. The second thing would be I would request all of you and this should be a given that you need to prioritize safety because please make sure to understand that we do not conduct clinical trial to prove efficacy of a vaccine. The fundamental of a clinical trial is to assess the safety of a drug. And once the drug is safe, then only you go on to efficacy criteria. So always make sure that you prioritize safety. You make sure that the adverse events are reported properly. The essays are reported properly. Do not hide any adverse event because unfortunately, if you hide this adverse event, you under report a particular safety event. And if that particular medication drug or a vaccine gets approval, then it can also be that your family member would also be taking this medication and the future generation what they will feel in terms of adverse events of this particular medication or vaccine which you did not competently prioritize in terms of safety will affect and haunt your future. So please make sure that safety is your utmost priority. Last but not the least ethics are the foundation and key to a very successful career and uh, GCP, I see GCP clearly highlights and is the cornerstone of clinical research. So if you want to become a successful clinical research professional, make sure you have, that you have a strong ethics and unwavering ethics to critical working of clinical research. Okay. So once you apply ethical methods in clinical research, reporting the safety, the informed consent. So you are proud to call yourself clinical research professional and you are not a pretender anymore. So make sure that you work like a professional, you have strong fundamentals, priority on safety and strong ethics and this will definitely skyrocket your career as a CRA and you will be very successful. So if you need to have a very successful career in clinical research, please make sure that you do a certification in clinical research and our friends at Clinical AIM Research Institute do a very well job and they have uh, a lot of students who work in clinical research successfully. So if any one of you is interested in pursuing this clinical research course, please make sure that you contact on the given numbers and you can check the description also if you are interested in enrollment. And uh, this is a one of a kind uh, course and it can be very helpful for your future successful job prospects. So I hope I was able to help you and enlighten you about what clinical research associate interview looks like and how you should function in that particular uh, career and how you can get a clinical research associate job. So thank you for watching this video till the end and make sure you share and subscribe this particular channel and video and thank you for joining us.